so they were yeah. throwing a frisbee and the th- frisbee went to the human excreta okay and everybody what? said what human excreta yeah oh oh ah yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, frisbee yeah, the yeah. frisbee went to ah, and then hit the uh, excreta and then people said like okay like uh, it's very disgusting and everything but sadguru <laughs> yeah. went over there picked it up and what sadguru says is like uh, uh this is the only difference that like uh, the excreta is like uh, currently inside your stomach so you Stomach. don't you don't uh, feel disgust but like when it come out you feel disgust okay <laughs> but it yeah. is still the excreta okay? yeah. so that is the disgust okay so like uh, these are the eight things now even though you know these kind of things you have to overcome but you cannot overcome by using your mind okay you cannot overcome by the mind because like uh, these are all the survival mechanism tools of the mind itself like i said yeah it's a fail safe system okay mm-hmm. now how can you use the mind to like a break itself is it it's impossible okay that's why that's why we are doing all this like a uh, sadhana practices energies we are using like uh, all these tools like uh, we using the grace uh, using like a uh, bhakti all this kind of tools just to like uh, you know uh, slowly dismantle this persona okay the identity which you have created basically ahankara we want to break if you break the if you make the ahankara loose mm-hmm. if you break your identity completely you become enlightened okay but after that like you will not be able to hold your body that's what sadguru says okay now you make it so loose uh, so flexible so that like you can hold the body but at the same time you can taste the beyond also okay so that is what we referred as like a self realization and like if you go to final stages or something that is referred as the enlightenment okay mm-hmm. so uh, it's not about like a destroying the like a uh, uh, identity completely like uh, sadguru has told that like uh, you can keep it aside and then like be it also that is what the meditation is okay so when you are doing the meditation if you go to the deeper stages or something uh, your identity is still there but like uh, it's on the side okay so you just learn to ignore it and then like uh, you just like uh, be in sync with the cosmos cosmos and everything okay whatever we call as a being or like a brahman or whatever we are to talk about here yeah. so this is this is basically like uh, the limitations although everybody knows like a kam krodh lo mo and ankara now you cannot do it by like uh, you know creating the ethics and then like uh, this is right or wrong crime and punishment and everything and we all know that like it has not worked is it yes or no yeah and the coronavirus has taught us in a big way isn't it? yeah <laughs> yeah so for the people living in the society like a kam krodh lo mo ankar makes sense but now like a people will say that okay like you have to overcome your fear you have to overcome your shame you have to overcome your disgust people will think you have gone mad isn't it yes or no <laughs> yeah yeah because uh, fear is basically what actually keeps the society alive okay so that's what it is yeah uh ana no, i had one uh, question i think i had asked you right yeah regarding the uh code that you had put on your status okay yeah which yeah, one there was so that one? I, eyes eyes are horizontal and uh, nose is oh yeah 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 i think i, I tried thinking over it but i could not get anything out of it which one what was that so uh, there is a like it was a quote from rumi i think right no no not the rumi it's a, like a zen master dogen okay oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. he's a he's a founder of like a soto zen okay soto zen is the uh, one of the zen uh, the story is very good okay if you google like uh, in the youtube you'll find the movie on his story okay it's called zen itself okay. you can watch it if you want to so i will not go into the story if i tell you the story like it will be very beautiful but like it is going to take like an entire time and everything we may not have time for that one so basically like uh, what actually happens is like uh, i'll give you like a very brief success a very summary of the story and then i'll come back to what like uh, akshay and i was asking okay because you need to know the context before you actually ask that one so basically what actually happens is like uh, uh, this guy called like a dogen like uh, who is a japanese person so his parents die away in the childhood okay yeah so okay. he joined some monastery and he became a buddhist and then like uh, there is a lotus sutra okay there is a lotus sutra is one of the very profound scriptures on buddhist buddhism uh, the most profound if you want to read the book like uh, there is a uh, one book called like a uh, uh, vajra chedak prajna paramita sutra okay that is uh, basically like a uh, pali 
language word uh, that is referred to as the diamond sutra okay in english so if you read that book that is that book is not for like uh, you know the seekers that book is for the uh, like uh, what we known as the bodhisattvas okay who have had got like a you know like a very uh, profound experiences and like they are in the threshold of becoming buddhas themselves okay that is what we refer as the bodhisattva that's why like many people get stuck with this full noble truth and then like eight fold path and everything these are the beginners for the beginners who are known as the shravakas okay shravakas are the people who listen okay they are the beginners mm. for them like a desire is a problem when uh, when buddha says like a desire is a problem he is talking with the people who are the beginners in the beginning okay mm. because they are want to meditate in the beginning that's why he is saying that like a, you have to control your desire in the beginning initially when they have not meditated or something when they start meditating they have got like a different teaching okay they so, have different kind of teaching okay okay huh, huh. for example like a uh, people who take the inner engineering is a different thing but even just after the initiation like uh, the teaching it changes isn't it completely you know 180 yeah, degree yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so totally. That, uh, totally 180 degree okay that's what i was okay. uh, talking about so uh, that's why like a uh, people may not be able have like uh, enough endurance or stamina to go all the way so there was a teaching in the lotus sutra that like everybody is a buddha okay yeah everybody is a buddha by like a birth okay so he had a question this like if everybody is a buddha already so why we have to do all this meditation and everything yes okay mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. sadguru also talks like everybody is a divine is there there is a creator within everyone yeah but people are doing all this stupid thing like you know sharing like a covid just like they are they don't want even share their cake but they cake but they are sharing covid with everyone is there so <laughs> Yeah. now like uh, that is the question here so he asks the question to his master and everyone they cannot answer okay because they are all like uh, you know memorized and everything so he said that okay i'll go to the china and then come back so at that time like uh, it will take like a uh, many many years okay just to travel from japan to china okay i think it was yeah. 12th or 13th or century which century it is like i'm a little bit confused because uh, so he goes to the china and then like he goes to all the monasteries and then he meets different kind of people like uh, who is uh, using a buddhism as like a you know livelihood and all that kind of stuff okay even <laughs> today you will find not only in buddhism everywhere like that okay so eventually like he reaches to one of the uh, zen master okay chan it's called chan in like uh, china okay when it go, went to uh, like a uh, japan it becomes like a zen okay so if you want to know like uh, in in like a uh, in like a pali language okay the time in the magad area like uh, where like a uh, buddha was like uh, you know enlight got enlightened at that time in the, the language was called pali language okay the speak, spoken language in that one like uh, yeah p a l i yeah p a l i pali okay. language so in pali language like uh, the meditation was called jhana okay j h a n a okay and okay. in sanskrit is called dhyana okay dhyana mm-hmm. and when it uh, it goes to the like uh, let's say if it goes to burma or like a uh, uh for example like uh, burma and then uh, thailand and everywhere okay so if you go over there like uh, it's called thien okay it's called thien if it goes to the china it becomes chan and it went to japan and it becomes zen okay so but like a uh, zen is completely different it's like quite crazy okay like a uh, shrigaranna has not joined today he asked me that question okay long time ago like uh, when we were doing the kaveri calling volunteering okay so i'll come into that one in a moment so like uh, you went to china and then like uh, he eventually met uh, the master and the moment like uh, they met like uh, the teacher didn't ask anything okay they just stare with each other and like uh, the zen transmission happen okay so zen also has got like a certain kind of transmission and they say like a uh, very few people are there okay the first transmission happened between like a uh, buddha and mahakashyapa okay that was one, that one and the recent uh, one actually happened the zen patriarch okay who started zen uh, okay. in the modern times what got bodhidharma okay so like uh, this guy called like a uh, dogen is actually the lineage of like a uh, bodhidharma himself okay so in this one like uh, it's a zen transmission happen there's no teaching nothing in zen pure zen like uh, there's no like a uh, teaching okay so okay. he got this experience and then like uh, eventually after many many years like uh, he didn't want to leave okay he got enlightened uh after many many years at the in china so his teacher said that like uh, in buddhism like uh, it's quite crazy okay the moment you get enlightened the teacher is going to like uh, throw you out of the monastery okay <laughs> because, because you got enlightened yeah because you got enlightened like uh, there's no need for you okay you for no you need, yeah, yeah 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 
So he's going to throw you out. Okay. So like uh, he, he is given like his lineage, the certificate of like enlightenment, and then like uh, he asks him, why they give certification is because like uh, all the enlightened masters are always looking for like a uh, one, like a disciple who is worthy. Okay, to continue succession or something. Okay, yeah. They may or may not be looking for it. That's a different aspect. But like uh, in Buddhism, like uh, there is because that is what we refer as a guru shishya parampara, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? Because yeah. like uh, you become enlightened because of your guru, okay? Yeah. 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 So like uh, it is there, okay? So because of his compassion, you got enlightened. So it's your like a responsibility to like um, keep the wheel moving, okay? That is why if you look into the Indian uh, Indian flag, isn't it? Yeah? The middle one is the Ashok Chakra. Yeah, you remember it? Yeah? That is actually the Buddhist Dhamma Chakra. Okay, that is a Buddhist Chakra actually, the center one. Initially, it was like uh, the wheel of like uh, you know. Uh, it was actually the uh, like uh, what is it called the charka of like uh, charka, charka, charka yeah. was there, but like after that it's also chakra okay, in the center. Wait, isn't it charka in real? No, no, it was charka in the beginning. Like uh, it is also chakra after that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, it can be like a charka as well, but like uh, it, uh, I think like it's also chakra. Okay, whichever whichever it is, I may not be like uh, that one, but okay, so. Uh, in my understanding, like uh, it is that one, okay? It looks like a wheel, okay? So, uh, now, like, uh, I might be wrong. So, like, uh, coming back, so, like, uh, he comes back to Japan. And now he comes back, like, uh, there are, like, uh, already, like, a lot of, like, uh, Buddhist monasteries in China, Japan, okay? Yeah? So, they hear that, like, uh, Dogen has came back from China with, like, uh, true teachings of Buddha, okay? Yeah? They're waiting, yeah. okay? Yeah. So, they come back and then, like, uh, they will ask, like, uh, what is your teaching and everything? And then, like, uh, uh, these guys are very loose, okay? They don't uh, actually, like, uh, do meditation, nothing, and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, eventually, like, uh, these guys come to him and then ask him, okay, what is the teaching you brought from China? Okay? So, he says that, like, eyes are horizontal and nose is vertical. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the teaching he brought from China, okay? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, now, like, uh, this is very, very profound, okay? So basically, like, uh, why Akshay Anna, like, uh, couldn't find the answer, like, he knows the answer, but, like, uh, he's unable to, like, understand the answer, is because, like, uh, I'm also unable, what, what, see, the way you tell it is very natural, okay? Yeah. I, it's not easy, no one can, I can't, I still not understand. Okay, anybody, anybody can try, like, uh, there are, like, other it people. It is the reality you, no. you say, is it? Nobody has got it. <laughs> you are no, telling I, me the so natural. I, I kind of tried uh, going through it, like, but I'm not sure if I was wrong. No, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. Is he using it as an irony, like, or something he's referring to? He's just trying to tell like, it's just things are the way they are. Okay, yeah, okay, probably, okay. Probably that's even, even me, I came up with that. So. Mm. Ramana? Yes. You want to throw something at me? Yeah, so like uh, anybody else also want to try? I think like uh, one Anna is like uh, sleeping inside the Isman doll, okay? And this is not actually a good thing. Who is in for the Shunya practice. Shunya uh, program is Vinod Vinod Vinod. Yeah. Oh, oh, cool, cool, nice. Yeah. So the program is finished, Anna? So sorry to end. No, 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 I haven't started it from tomorrow. Okay. Right, what is that tomorrow? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, no worries. Uh, let me, let me, uh, yeah, let me answer this. Okay, it's uh, nearly like uh, oh. 9.30, so like, uh, uh, Rakishana, you want to try? Uh, I hey, Rakishana, I didn't tell Mirror question only. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you first tell Mirror question. <laughs> uh, no, I couldn't get, I am just seeing myself, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody sees uh, them same one knees and yeah, so yeah, that's also correct answer. Yeah. Okay, no, so what is that in depth meaning of what do you see in, in a mirror? There's like, like, there, you mean there, to say that when, uh, <laughs> like, Sadhguru is saying that you know, there is a, a the mirror is not clean, if you rub it, will be you know, if you rub yourself, you'll be seeing yourself uh, like the way you have to see. Is it that or I'm not, I'm not getting it? Yeah, sort of, yeah, that is the correct answer, yeah. No? <laughs> no, no, you are telling everything as correct answer. I don't know. Are you, that, <laughs> that is also correct, isn't it? I told the same answers as you. He said no, no, no. That is also correct answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I look into the mirror, like I look at myself, isn't it? Anna, but like you can yeah. try again. So that is okay. <laughs> okay. 
is right in one way <laughs> yeah one way see nobody nobody is wrong in the world because like there are no questions isn't it <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. okay <laughs> Okay coming back to like uh, that one okay so like uh, what do you actually mean by like uh, you know eyes are horizontal and nose is like uh, you know vertical isn't it yeah? yes yeah so why uh, this is so like uh, what is actually trying to tell is like uh, the world is like uh, so obvious okay yeah mm-hmm. the world is obvious uh, which basically means like i was uh, telling like a uh, kritika kas like a uh, point also comes into the play like uh, i said that like uh, everybody everything is like uh, happening in repetition isn't it yeah? yes Okay. Yeah. Why is it so obvious? Is because it's repeating. Yes or no? Yeah. If yeah. it was not repeating, will it be obvious? No. No, it will not be obvious. Isn't it? Yeah? So basically, like uh, when people die, like uh, they just die. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. It's obvious. Mm-hmm. But like uh, people get fear about it. Like uh, they will see, okay, whether this person will go to the heaven or hell or something. Did this guy did like a uh, bad karma, good karma? <laughs> All this kind of stuff you are adding up. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So for example, yeah. for example, you see like a, let's say Kritika Kas is like a very handsome hunk of a guy. Yeah. Just like that uh, Sankaran Pillai story, like a, where a girl will see a, like a hunk of a man. Yeah. Just like Sankaran mm-hmm. Pillai. So okay. if you see that person, like a uh, that person is just a person. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. people say okay, maybe like a, this is the person from my past life. Okay. This is going person is going to make me so happy. like uh, this is the best person most handsome person in the world but after few months like what will happen like uh, you'll see another guy and then you say the same thing yes <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, akshay anna will say the same thing to like a uh, two or three like uh, you know <laughs> all that kind of stuff will go on okay so basically what is not actually no not now yeah if i was not initiated probably <laughs> so so what like uh, dogen is actually saying is is like uh, the true teaching is to see the reality as it is okay yeah without yeah. adding anything without subtracting anything yes so i was right was i was i right? it's up to you to judge you know how can i judge <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't tell anything you didn't comment yeah anything. you didn't tell anything we we said we said that like that's the reality is what you meant things are the way they are yes that is that is what it is so basically like uh, what yeah. is the meaning is like uh, the buddhist way of it is is you are not going to add anything into the reality you are not going to like uh, subtract anything from, from the reality mm. it is about like a direct experience with the existence okay mm. so that is what it is so that is basically what is mean by the jain itself for example like if somebody says like uh, you know shrigarana actually like uh, he is missing today so he asks me like uh, what is zen or something okay so mm. uh, coming back into this one i will tell you the first zen okay first zen that happened Like uh, Sadhguru has already mentioned that one. Like uh, Adi Yogi is the first Jain master. Yes. Okay. But coming back into the Buddhist tradition, I'm going to tell you. So what actually happens is like uh, one day, like uh, there's a uh, like a uh, very popular hill. Okay, the Vulture Peak. Okay. Yeah. Vulture Peak in like uh, Uttar Pradesh. So like uh, over there, or Bihar possibly. Okay. So like uh, Buddha is there with like all this like uh, you know shiny head people. Okay. Shiny head means like all monks. Okay. <laughs> Okay. from behind like oh, okay. everybody looks the same okay uh, yeah okay. so he is okay. sitting with all this like a thousands and thousands of monks okay he is sitting over there mm-hmm. he is one of the like a very like a successful and power, very like a lucky person because like he was able to like have that kind of following okay yeah monks only you cannot find that kind of people anywhere now like he was sitting with all these people and then like people say that like he is going to come and then like give some kind of sermon okay because he is going to come and he is going to tell some kind of stuff okay yeah discourse mm. so people are sitting sitting waiting 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 i'll tell you like a the amount of discourse if you go what buddha said your life will end you will not be able to like uh, complete it okay it is that much because he lived till the age, age of 80 and uh, uh, here is like a cousin brother called ananda who actually like uh, noted down everything and the ego is not there so like uh, what he has written is like i have heard okay the even the writer who wrote that narration says i have heard okay <laughs> he doesn't say that buddha has said okay <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> now because like uh, they know that like uh, the translation can happen but even though like uh, i have read like angulimala story like a uh, four five variations okay 
So people are like that kind, like who can twist and turn. That happened to Bhagavad Gita and everything also, like uh, 10, 15, even like 100, 200 versions. Okay? Now coming back, like, uh, so they were in the vulture peak and then like uh, people are sitting over there and Buddha came. And Buddha came and then like uh, Buddha had a lotus in his hand, okay? Like uh, people were thinking, okay, like uh, Buddha is going to give some sermon and something. They were just waited, 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 waited. Now Buddha was not saying anything. He had a lotus in his hand and sat down. And in that group, like uh, there was a very one rich person who has actually with his wife, they were very successful peop uh, rich people, but like uh, they didn't have children. And then like they have got a lot of land. But when they knew about Buddha, like they renounced everything and both of them become monks, okay? Yeah? Mm. So uh, one become like in the male, male like a bhikshu and then a, a, and the one became like a bhikshuni, okay? This is like a male and female, like a monk and like a, uh, they join and then like uh, this guy was like a very fierce, okay? Meditator. He meditates all the time and he never speaks, okay? But but they say that uh, yeah. Buddha never took uh, ladies as monks, right? No, no, no. He took like uh, he took when like uh, he had to initiate his like uh, stepmother, okay? Oh, okay. Because like when he came back, like uh, came back to like uh, the uh, what is it called? Like when he came back uh, from. After like uh, he got enlightened, he went back to Kapil Vastu, okay, in Lumini, mm -hmm. in Nepal, where like uh, his palace was. He went back, and like uh, he met his wife, children, and everything. And then like uh, his mother, okay, his stepmother, because his uh, actual mother like uh, died long time ago, okay, mm -hmm. when he was like a child, seven days old. So like uh, she wanted to become monk. So like uh, because like uh, he was uh, taken care by his mother, his stepmother, entire life. So like uh, he couldn't say no to her. So yeah. So once uh, he initiated, that's how like uh, you made like a uh, monks for like a female also. Now uh, coming back like uh, uh, what I was talking about in the vulture peak. So uh, Mahakashyapa, okay, this uh, name is like a uh, Mahakashyapa. So like uh, he was sitting over there, okay. So he was like uh, sitting in the group, okay, lot of people. So all the people were waiting. What like a uh, uh, Buddha was trying to say is the same thing like uh, let's say Sadhguru comes into like uh, you know Adi Yogi Alam, everybody sitting over there. Yes, okay. And they are just waiting for Sadhguru to say something, yeah, okay? Mm. But he just goes on like, uh, you know, <laughs> just sitting still and everything. People will think, okay, what's going on, like uh, when he's going to speak. And uh, finally, like, uh, Buddha didn't spoke, but Ma Kashyapa laughed, okay? Yeah? Ma Kashyapa oh, laughed. Ma Kashyapa is the same yeah. person, like the guy, like, who was rich and he... Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he never spoke with anyone. He was sitting just over there. He was meditating, of course. But in that group, like, he was the only person who laughed very crazily, okay? He would never speak with anyone, he would never laugh also. He laughed a lot. Mm. And, like, uh, people thought, like, okay, he has gone crazy or something and everything. And, like, uh, people asked, okay, Buddha, okay? Like, uh, what happened, like, we didn't hear anything, like, uh, what you have done and, like, uh, what, what is wrong with him, like, uh, what happened to him? And what Buddha says is, like, uh, whatever I cannot, like... Uh, what any whatever I could not like uh, you know convey through words I have like uh, given that to Mahakashiva. Okay, mm. so basically that is what we refer at the moment like uh, as a presence or something. Yeah, just like Sadhguru presence yeah. is in yeah? mm. Okay, mm. so that is like a very similar to that one. Okay, transmission. So basically like a Mahakashiva actually became the like uh, the first lineage after the Buddha. Okay, so after Buddha passed away, Mahakashiva like a uh, you know. Uh, took charge of like uh, entire stuff and then uh, he was the it was the like a first gen transmission in terms of like a buddhism so i think like a bodhidharma comes into like a number eight or like a something like that i'm not sure the number but yeah that is how it comes yeah so uh, what it is basically means is like uh, so people are saying so that is what it is okay so uh, he understood that like uh, you know words are useful for the people like uh, just like Sadhguru says that like uh, you know even Sadhguru says it and yeah so if you are willing he does not need to say anything okay yeah mm -hmm. so that is the same thing yeah so uh, this thing like uh, coming back <laughs> into <laughs> this one that like uh, you know eyes are horizontal and nose is vertical is basically is the obvious thing isn't it yeah mm -hmm. So that is what it is. So basically, like people are thinking, okay, Buddha means like, what is a Buddha? So people have so many ideas. Yes, correct. Yeah. Mm. So the moment you drop all the ideas, and then you have like a direct experience with the reality. Okay. Mm. 
and that even is, though it is easy to say it's just reality or it's just uh, uh what was the word that you used which one zen for no not zen reality obvious the obvious yeah obvious yeah, yeah yeah it's very subtle like we have to look it in a very subtle way no right? no 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 you can you can look into it that's the biggest problem <laughs> <laughs> that is that is why because like i see like that is what the entire uh, spiritual process is you know so for example like when you are doing your sadhana or something like there is a moment or like uh, if you got established or something you can continue that one okay why uh, for example like if you are doing only like uh, the ba- uh, basic practices like shamavi or something then like uh, that is going to last like a very shorter period okay yeah but if you have uh, invested yourself in like all the advanced practices or something you can ride it like a bicycle okay you can ride it as long as you can <laughs> so that is like a that is the truth like i am talking about because like that is my living experience so basically like a, what it, it is like a, what it is and like a, what is the main obvious or something is basically like the undercurrent okay at the moment like a, we are just seeing the outer thing what is actually happening in the reality isn't it yes so this is all full of duality okay this is all full of duality because like uh, like sadguru also has already explained many times that like if you look into the one side of the ha- hand you cannot see the other side yes mm. because like uh, your five senses are very limited because like uh, it can only grasp very limited information okay mm. and not only limited information it will always use the information in terms of relation with the previous data yeah yeah so for example like uh, if you are already hungry then like uh, you cannot become more hungry okay you can eat the food okay if you eat the food you will feel uh, full is it now once you are full can you feel hungry again no you cannot feel hungry is it yes mm-hmm. similar way like uh, you can you can feel pain only because you can feel pleasure okay mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff will be there but like uh, what we refer as the reality as such is basically like uh, you are not going to add anything you are not going to subtract anything for example like it has got many different connotations in terms of the buddhism and everything so basically like uh, the buddhism way is more like uh, you know the accepting the reality as it is okay the first thing comes to the uh, reality that it is and like uh, what how actually like uh, you know dogen actually like uh, you know explain for example like uh, when dogen was meditating and everything once when he got enlightened he ran to his master okay he ran to his master and told him that my mind and body has fallen away okay so he said that like my mind and body has fallen away he said and then like what the guru said what the master said actually was go back again and then let it fall down fall out again okay so what he said was just like the enlightenment is like a infinite your practice is also infinite okay and there is no difference between the practice and then the enlightenment itself what is it okay so at the moment like uh, we have like uh, this kind of discrimination that like uh, this is important and that is not important is it yes mm-hmm. why this is happening because like uh, we have already divided the reality is it yes we are not seeing yeah. the reality as it is again okay <laughs> so this is a trap yeah. of the mind because uh, whenever we are thinking like uh, the thinking can only happen for what we already know just like sadguru says that like uh, it works only because of the data you have is it no? okay mm-hmm. that is the technical terminology of that one but at the same time what actually happens is like uh, your mind will feel good when you have new information always okay yeah. because like uh, the more information you have the more better it feel for example like uh, if you go to the top of the mountain why you feel good is because now you can see more area is it no? yes okay Yeah. so like uh, yeah. you got more information so that your survival chances has gone up okay so your mm. body is going to reward you okay mm. so like uh, there are different chemicals like you know dopamine serotonin like uh, all that kind of stuff pheromone and then like uh, you know ananda mind also <laughs> so basically ananda mind is a way of like a, you know chemical way of like uh, talking about uh, you know uh, the secretion from your like a third eye okay pineal gland yeah 